This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Lead us, our gracious Heavenly Father, as we study today. I pray that the Holy Spirit will open the eyes of my heart, my inner man, the inner man, the Spirit. I pray, Lord, that I will be able to see with the inner eye and speak words, our Father, that are prompted by the Spirit. God forbid that I say one word in the flesh or one word that ought not be said, but God forbid that I fail to say what ought to be said to the glory of God. Save many souls today for Jesus' sake. Amen. We are studying the marriage of the Lamb. Revelation 19. And I'm reading the same verses that I've read every day, and I make no apology for reading them again today because they are very important. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they. And that word means happy. Happy are they which are called under the marriage supper of the Son of God. No. The Lamb. The King of Kings, no, the Lamb. The Creator, no, the Lamb. The Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God, and I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that uh, have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, that's a command. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now, it is most interesting to me, and it is most helpful to me, in my Christian life and in my Christian experience, to know that one day all of these trials and tribulations and pain and sorrow and disappointment will be over and we will sit down with Jesus at the marriage supper in the sky. And those of us who are born again, washed in the blood, saved by the grace of God, we will be married to the Lord Jesus, the Lamb of God. We are the bride, the church, the New Testament church is the bride, and Jesus is the bridegroom. Now then, I've been giving you day by day the verses in the New Testament that mention the Lamb on yesterday. I read in Revelation 14, the last verse I read was concerning the 144,000 standing on Mount Zion. Now let me read that verse, part of it, and then you look at verse 4. Now listen to this very carefully. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, a lamb, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb. Whithersoever he goeth, these were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Now, we will not go into the 144,000 because that is another subject. But the thing that I want you to see, we're studying about the Lamb, the Lamb of God, the marriage of the Lamb. These, now John saw the Lamb as he stood on Mount Zion, and then he saw 144,000, and then he declared that these are virgins, and they are those who follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. And they are without fault before God. Now the reason they follow the Lamb is the same reason that the two disciples of John the Baptist left John the Baptist and followed Jesus. Two of John's disciples stood with John the Baptist and John said, Behold the Lamb of God. And they did. And they went to him and with him and they followed him. 
Now, did that break the heart of John? Indeed, it did not. He said, I must decrease, he must increase. John said, I am not the Messiah, I'm not the, that light, I am a voice crying in the wilderness. And when John saw the Lamb, the Lamb of God, he invited his disciples to see the Lamb. And of course, when they saw him, they followed him. And they went home with him that day, and they never left him, so far as I know. They stayed with him, and they followed Jesus until he was nailed to Calvary, the cross. All right, now Calvary's cross, all right? So the next lamb is in chapter 14 and verse 10. And listen to this. Now this is speaking. Now we have just read about 144,000 standing with the Lamb of God on Mount Zion. And they are there because the Lamb was slain, and he did come, he came, his primary purpose, the number one mission of Jesus into this world was to take away the sin of the world. John 1, 29. Gospel of John 1, 29. He came to take away the sin of the world. And the way he took away the sin of the world, he laid his life down. He died on a cruel cross. Now, we see these wonderful, glorious people. That is, they are wonderful and glorious because they possess the glory of God and they are saved by the blood of the Lamb. And it's blessed are they. Now, in the verses I'm about to read, we find the third angel followed, and he, with a loud voice, said, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture. That is, it is not watered down, it is not mixed with anything, it's pure judgment. Now listen to what I'm saying to you. God is love, but God is a consuming fire. God is gracious and long-suffering and tender and merciful, and he's not willing that any should die and burn in hell, but God is holy and righteous, and God's righteousness demands the punishment of sin. But God provided the Lamb to take away the sin. And if you'll trust the Lamb, then in the sight of God you have no sin. When God sees a person who is in Christ and covered by the blood, God sees the Christ, the blood, the Lamb. He does not see that poor, miserable sinner saved by God's grace. Now, they'll drink of the wine of the wrath of God poured out, out without mixture in the cup of indignation and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. Now, you don't hear much about that today. There are millions in America. I don't mean uh, 50 million or 100 million. I don't know how many million, but I know there are many hundreds of thousands, tens of hundreds of thousands in America who do not believe in a literal burning hell. They reject it because they've been taught by liberal ministers and religions that deny the Bible. And if you don't believe in hell, you don't believe the Bible. If you don't believe in the fire of hell, you don't believe the words of Jesus. Because he said in the Sermon on the Mount, don't call your brother a fool. Thou shalt not, in other words, don't call your brother a fool. If you do, you are in danger of hell fire. And then again in Mark, he said it's better to lose your hand, your foot, your eye. It is better to have your hand chopped off and your foot cut off and your eye gouged out than to have these members and drop into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And so if you don't believe in hell, you don't believe the Bible, you don't believe Jesus. Now you say, preacher, that's symbolic. Doesn't say anything about it being symbolic. And if the fire here is a symbol of judgment and punishment, then the real thing will be worse than fire. So I'll just take it literally. And until God says in his word, this is a parable, and this is a symbol, I will just take it literally. And I won't symbolize it. So there'll be torment, fire, and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Now let me tell you something. I do not know, I cannot dogmatically declare, but I do 
believe with all my heart what I'm going to say. Now the angels and the Lamb will witness the torment of the ungodly. Now whether they will uh, witness it for eternity, I can't answer that. I'm not going to attempt to. But I do not believe that those of us who are born again, let me put it this way, I do not believe that born again believers will see their loved ones in hell. If you're, if you are so unfortunate that one of your loved ones, a member of your family or a dear friend or someone you know that you uh, respected very highly and, uh, and you thought the world of them, if they died in sin and they died lost, then maybe you've been saved since they died and maybe both of you were sinners. I, and you say, Brother Green, I don't think I could enjoy heaven if my friend's in hell. Listen, the former things shall be remembered no more, we read in Revelation. All things will be created new and uh, all sin, every trace of sin will be erased. There'll be a new heaven, a new earth, pretty white city. All things will be new. And I do not believe that born again people in heaven or throughout eternity will ever see hell fire and fire and brimstone. Now we will be present at the judgment, the great white throne. We'll be there with Jesus at the great white throne judgment. I believe that. But I don't believe you'll ever see the lake of fire. I don't believe that. Now, it's possible in God's power that you could see and that would make you appreciate your salvation even more, but I don't believe you will. So if you have a loved one in hell, you'll never see them again. But if you have a loved one in heaven and you're born again, you'll see them again. You'll see them in that wonderful pearly white city. And of course, you'll see them at the marriage supper and you'll see them in the millennium if they died in Christ, if they're born again now and they go out to meet God, you'll see them again. So the wicked, the, the beast worshipers, and those who receive the mark of the beast will be tormented in fire and brimstone forever and ever. And they'll be tormented in the presence of the Lamb, the holy angels, and the smoke of their torment, ascended up forever and ever, have no rest day or night, who worship the beast, his image, or whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. I heard a voice say, right, blessed are the dead, who die in the Lord from henceforth. That is, happy are the dead who die in the Lord. That Those who died in Christ, those who died a believer, are happy. Those who died out of Christ, those who have died, they're in hell, they're burning now, they are, being, they are in torment now. And they are there of their own choosing, God did not intend for anyone to burn in hell. God provided salvation for whosoever will. And if you're not saved, it's not God's fault, it's your fault. And if you do not attend the marriage supper of the Lamb, it will not be God's fault, it'll be your fault, my friend. All right? The next one that I want you to see is in the 15th chapter. Now, in chapter 15... We have the vision of the angels that have the bowls, the containers that contain the last plagues, the last seven plagues. And he saw a sign in heaven, a great marvelous sign, angels having seven last plagues and in them is filled up the wrath of God. That is the fullness of the wrath of God is contained in these bowls, these uh, containers. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Now, John saw this in the spirit. It will literally occur. Listen to what happened. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. So we have here a great multitude 
singing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and they're singing the song of the Lamb, and they're saying to God the Father, you're great, and you are right, and great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, King of saints. So the Lamb of God, as I said on a previous broadcast, the Lamb of God did not first occur some 2,000 years ago when the Virgin Mary brought forth her firstborn son. She named him Jesus, Savior, as instructed by the angel. She named him Jesus. But the Lamb has been from eternity. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. You are redeemed with the precious blood as of a lamb without spot or blemish, foreordained before the foundation of the world. Now the Lamb has been from eternity. He will be through eternity because the Lamb is the center and the heartbeat and the bloodstream and the life of the program of God from everlasting to everlasting. Now, the blood of the Lamb. Jesus was born Savior, King of the Jews. He was a great healer. He worked great miracles. He uttered wonderful words of life. But he died as the Lamb. As a sheep before her shadows is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Now let me ask you a question. Can you remember, I don't mean a minute on the clock or watch. I don't mean a minute or an hour. I don't even demand the day. You may not know whether it was Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. I do. I was saved on a Sunday night. You may have forgotten the night. It could have been in a revival in some place and it could have been a weeknight and you may have forgotten whether it was Tuesday or Wednesday, whether it was Thursday or Monday. Now, I'm not demanding that you tell me the exact moment or the hour or the day or the date of the month. I'm not demanding that. But I am saying this by way of suggestion. If you cannot remember the experience then I suggest to you that you bow down on your knees right now if you are in a position where you can. Now, if you're riding down the highway in an automobile, unless you pull over on the side of the road, and we've had people to do this, I have letters to prove it. We've had people to pull over on the shoulder, pull off in a rest area, and get saved, beloved. Right, we have. We had one precious postman delivering mail. And I made a statement similar to this, and he stopped his automobile. He got out on the side of the road and fell down by his automobile on the shoulder of the road and gave his heart to God and wrote and told me about it. Now, if you can, if you can't remember an experience when you trusted Jesus and Jesus saved your soul, then I beg you to get out on your knees right now and call on God and ask him to save you through the blood of Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, through the blood of Jesus, for Jesus' sake, I beseech thee, O God, save every soul that's calling upon thee now. Amen.